Hello, my name is Greg. Welcome to episode 3 of 3D Pokemon like game in Unity. We have implemented a way to interact with the world, but sometimes you want your world to react to actions of your player. For example, when player enters certain area, you want something to happen. For example, we want to make those gates open automatically when character approaches them. To do this, you need to designate an area as a trigger for those gate to open. So we will make an object. With a box collider to designate the area for our trigger. So when something enters the collider in front of those gates, which is set as a trigger collider, we can tell to gate to open itself. Select the trigger object and create another new component called word trigger area. Open newly created component. To make trigger object react to something entering its boundaries, we can use Unity callback called onTriggerEnter. Because our game is 3D game, make sure to use this one instead of 2D one. This callback gets a collider as a parameter, a collider of the object which just entered this trigger area. So for the testing, we can just print out the name of the object which just entered this trigger area. Now you will see every time when I enter the trigger, I will get a message with the name of the character object. Good. So right now any object entering the trigger will be triggering this message. We want to limit it to be only activated by player character. And to do this, we want to make it clear what object is a player character. The most common solution people use is to tag the object as being player object. While it's fine, I don't like using tags. Here is why. Let's say you want to check that object which enters the trigger area as a player object. So we check his tag. And oops, I made a typo. Using tag is case sensitive too. So if you type it like this, it will not work. Or try to imagine spotting typo like this after 12 hours of coding in big project. So instead we will use a component to identify the player character object. So select a player character object and create another new component called player character. And in the world trigger area, we will try to get the player character. This will make the only objects with the player character uh, component be able to trigger this trigger. Now inside the world trigger area, we can add a delegate on enter. and invoke this delegate every time the player object enters the trigger area. So in editor, let's set the gate to disappear if we enter the trigger.
Let's make a copy of the trigger area and make it bring back the gate on the other side. Good. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. You will get cool perks like being featured uh, on the screen with other people who help to make this show going or access to project files on Patreon. One of the most important features for exploring the world in Unity is switching scenes. Right now we are in the town and then you leave the town and enter forest or river and you want your game to move you to a different scene. So let's make it possible to enter the house behind us. Let's recap how you can interact with objects. Make some kind of shape for interactable object. In this case, let's make a cube. Place it in the area where a player needs to click to commit for interact. Remove mesh from it because it will be invisible cube and uh, the interactable object will be our door. Let's rename it. And to mark object as being interactable, we add interactable component. Then we will create another new component called change scene interact. So we need to make a scene for the room we are entering when we are interacting with the house. So make a new simple scene to serve as our inner house scene. Nothing special, just a plane and a cube. Then open newly created script for change scene interact. And create a new method called change scene. Where we will simply tell to scene manager to load scene room. Make sure the name you type here is exactly the same name as you named your new scene. It's case sensitive. Set to code change scene on interact. There is a small issue. We cannot approach the house because uh, this fence is blocking our way. Let's turn off its collider for now. Add all scenes into the build. Just to make sure we can hit the interactable object, let's pull it a little closer out of the house. Now if I approach the house door and click right mouse button, I should be transferred to a different scene. But there is nothing. Yes, the room scene does contain camera and light, but there is no character. So you might think, oh, it's an easy solution. Let's place our character here, maybe move and set up a camera and then, well, no, 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 no. That is not how you should do it. Imagine having hundreds of those scenes. That's gonna take forever to set up all of them. To make it possible to reuse our character on all scenes we will do an approach with loading two scenes, an essential scene containing all the essential parts of the game, and the environment scene, 
which is being explored right now by your character or whatever. Create scene which we will call essential. Make sure your essential scene is open and drag and drop the town scene into the hierarchy. This will load the town scene additively with your essential scene. As you can see, we have both scenes loaded at the same time, essential and town. Let's delete camera and light on the essential scene. Essential scene will contain every object necessary for the game to function on any environment. So let's move our camera and character. Let's grab the light object from the town scene and place it into essential scene. Good. So now when we are loading a room scene, we want to load it as an additive scene while unloading the current town scene. This will make the town environment be unloaded and room environment loaded while keeping essential scene. Load room scene and delete camera and light from the room scene because we have and carry camera and light on our essential scene between environment scenes. Make the floor bigger. Now every time when you want to load a new environment in Unity Editor, you do it by loading essential scene first and then loading an environment additively. When you work in the editor, what you must make sure is that your essential scene stays as main scene. Look how highlighted its name in comparison to the environment. This means this essential scene is the main scene. And now you should be able to move to a different scene. Let's sort our root folder and scripts into folders. This is just an introduction of scene management. It's just fundamentals we will build upon this system in next episode. This is it for this episode. Special thank you to Stray Chelzo. With best regards, see you in the next episode.